Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another gameplay video of a new hero who has not yet been implemented into Dota 2. And I have to beg your forgiveness in this game already because I am playing with severe movement deficiency in my left arm. And this hero is a bit micro-intensive and already I'm pretty terrible with micro-intensive heroes in general. So if this gameplay video gives you just brain damage then um, I apologize. But I will be playing Zeth the Arc Warden. And I'm really bad with this hero. I'm just gonna put it straight like that. As I want to go mid, and I'm just gonna get the standard items for Dota One mids, which is to get the courier, since nobody else will get the courier in Dota One pubs. And three GG branches. But yeah, this is Zeth the Arc Warden, and he can most be compared to he can be compared to most similar to a combination of Meepo and Tinker. And you can find out very, very shortly. But he's an agility based hero. You can see his damage is really bad. He has no armor. He has a below average mace wound speed of 295. Not the best in the world. His attack range is pretty decent, 625, so it's on level with Draw Ranger. Although a little bit less than Lena. And I think it's above most range heroes' average, but its move speed doesn't mean that extra 25 range won't really matter too much. <coughs> three in heroes is the call. Man, three in heroes is such a bad idea to get in a game. Anyways, I'm gonna go mid with this hero. I don't know if this hero is intended to be played as mid. I'm just gonna go with mid because I want to get levels and I want to get my items online ASAP. I think this hero could potentially function well as an okay support, but I think he probably thrives most as a trialing carry. And you'll see why very shortly, but I'm gonna get his skill points up. This hero was introduced, I think, a year and a half ago. He was introduced in 6.75, and keep in mind it's already 6.78, so it's been a while since this hero was introduced. But I'm going to take Spark Wraith L1. Now, what Spark Wraith does is that it has a long cast range, I think 2,000 range. It forms the spirit over 3 seconds. It's not chilling or anything like that. It does give you the same amount of vision in Templar Assassin Trap, but you can't really block neutrals with it, thank god. You can, has a duration of 50 seconds, has a cooldown of 4 seconds, and does do quite a bit of damage, but... Since it takes 3 seconds to materialize, opponents can easily dodge out of the way, and that's how the Spark Wraith does the damage. If it's near an opponent, by the time it triggers, it'll go straight to the opponent, dealing a nice chunk of damage, and overall just being generally annoying. But because when it materializes, it's fully visible, opponents can very easily dodge out of the way. I think this spell you should probably max if you are going in the mid lane solo position, just to try to keep the enemy out as much as possible. And you can see... The base damage is pretty pathetic. I'm gonna drop a spark right here, and we'll see if he's gonna run into it. No, it's gonna hit the range creep. Still alright, since I got some semblance of damage. And I think the creeps are gonna run in. Yeah, see? Just. I mean, Spark Wraith does do a significant chunk of damage, and that's why he's playing so conservatively. Um, I guess I'll give Flux a little too. I don't know how useful Flux will be in the mid lane situation. Probably not useful whatsoever, but I guess it's useful in case somebody comes to gank me. What Flux does is that it does damage and it does a huge chunk of slow only if there are no enemy units around the hero that's targeting. Oh my god, this base damage is giving me huge amounts of problems. And of course, me being bad with this hero isn't really helping matters. So this ability, if there are units next to the hero or next to you that you're targeting, because you can target creeps with this ability, then it will just be completely negated. It lasts for six seconds and if the hero sort of walks in range or out of range of an enemy unit, then that effect will either trigger or detrigger. So it's just very, very volatile based on the enemy's positioning. And I'm just going to drop a spark right here just to cover my retreat. May get a farm. Oh my god, I'm actually doing a bit better than I expected in terms of last hitting. And as soon as I say that, I fuck up. The good thing about this hero is you can see his base strength is pretty good. Oh my god, what's with this lag? Dota Cash, why have you forsaken me, friend? Drop a Spark Wraith, not gonna hit anybody. The AoE trigger on Spark Wraith I think is 350 or 400. I'm gonna get Magnetic Field at level 4. I think it's very useful to get at least one point. What Magnetic Field does is that this is the ability that helps define Arc Warden because this ability gives buildings as well as allied units um, an increase in attack speed and 100% physical evasion. But to balance it out, it has a really long cooldown, 50 seconds at all levels. 
Now, leveling up increases the attack speed. I'm not too sure if it increases duration. I have not really played that hero that much in order to fully understand what this hero actually does. Uh, this looks like somebody upgraded the courier, so I'm gonna share units. Because I didn't actually notice that the courier was upgraded. Man, I'm actually doing a decent round of harassing with Spark Wraith. I think a common mid soul player, well, obviously, a player who knows what to do against this hero will just dodge every single Spark Wraith and just maneuver his creep positioning so that it's really, really difficult to actually land a Spark Wraith. But I guess this guy has probably not played against Arkwarn too much. Arkwarn is a very unconventional hero. It might be a little bit too complex for, I guess, not so first players that still remain in Dota 1 Dota cash pubs. I mean, shots of them. A lot of them are still dedicated to Dota 1. I mean, respect that. But, yep, got a max spark rate. And you can see that its max level does pretty decent amount of damage. 300 damage every 4 seconds in a 2000 range is definitely nothing to be underestimated. But, yeah, back to Magnetic Field. The thing about this is that you can cast the buildings, and the buildings will get zero evasion, and it'll be like a mini glyph. Or get 100% evasion, so it'll be like a mini glyph, and it also increases attack speed, albeit half the bonus that it gives to allied units. So, at level 1, it'll give only 25% attack speed to towers, and so on and so forth. Now, what this hero really does is... Um, looks like we're gonna gank. Oh my god! Sen! Thank you. <laughs> that was almost disastrous. But you saw he played that wrong. I actually could have died, but if he just stayed close to the creeps, I probably would have died since the flux wouldn't have ticked in. And Flux's AoE, I think, is around 225, something like that. It's not that good. Now, this is his bread and butter, and this is why you need to get Midas on this hero, and a lot of low cooldown ultimates. What this ability does is that it summons a clone of the hero that can do everything. It can get the items online, it can do whatever you damn well please. Uh, can I deny myself with this ability? I think I'm gonna be okay. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm just going to drop some spark rates and go back to base. Might as well use all of my bottle. And try to get as much gold as possible. I'm not using my ultimate just yet because I don't really see the point of using my ultimate at this stage. I mean, it does cost mana as well as HP at the very early levels, but actually I regen up a healthy amount. Now, I don't know if I'll actually... I should probably get boots on this hero because I do want to get the minus up, but having boots up on a mid laner is of course very useful to control the runes. And unfortunately, the lane is not really with me at this stage. Looks like he took a lot of spark rate damage, or a lot of creep damage. So that's pretty good. Now I'm just going to scout out the rune with spark rate to see if it's top. It is not top, it is bottom. And that means I'm going to have to push out the wave. And spark rate duration allows me to do that. So that's the good thing about spark rate. It lasts very, very long. The bad thing is against players who don't know how to deal with, or who know how to deal with it, it loses a lot of effectiveness, and I think he rushed the rune. But yeah, I may mean, I'll just ignore boots, just farm up, try to get my minus up ASAP. Because this ability, when you get it, or his ultimate, when you get minus, since it has 60 second cooldown on his ultimate, the minus instantly comes up, so that means he can do a lot of crazy things. He can get two sets of Necrobuck Warriors, he can get two minus usages, or you can use one minus every, I guess, 60 seconds, and that'll definitely increase your gold intake. You can use double minus and really take a huge gold advantage, although it won't increase your experience advantage because the experience technically goes to the clone, and the clone does not level up. So I'm just going to keep farming up, trying to make my way towards the minus. And it's so easy to last hit when there's nobody in my lane. Got one. <laughs> I don't know why I'm so proud of myself. I don't, I, in the past game that I played, it's just really been hard for me to get last hits with this hero since his base damage is really, really annoying to do that. 
but obviously, since he wants to get my sub, he can be played either as a mid or a soul or a soul safe laner. And if you play him as soul safe laner, you can get your items up ASAP. But I don't know if that's the best usage of using a soul safe laner. I mean, having two necro book level threes at around <laughs> I don't know 20 minutes in game, considering the ex experience ex or god the increased gold intake that you get with this hero, could potentially be enough to win you the game. But I've got to imagine that if you don't win the game at that stage, then you could be in a bit of a rude awakening as PL is harassing out of lane. I'm just going to drop more spike rates. 50 mana cost. Such a useful ability to have maxed. Oh man. I thought my projectile would be slow enough. I'm just going to cast a Tempest Double in case he had enough mana to go in. And I'll just farm with the Tempest Double. See, you can cast all the abilities, but my Tempest Double actually doesn't have any mana. And it's not like an illusion where you take sort of reduced damage and you get reduced attack damage. This scales perfectly. It's a perfect clone that lasts for 20 seconds. Now, I am going to get a reasonably time minus, all things considered. So that's pretty nice for me. And once I get that, I should be able to start putting in work. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, since he is obviously a Midas carrier, you should probably get him as much farm as possible. I think he can function reasonably well as a support, since his spells are pretty defensively minded in nature. I mean, having 100% evasion on your buildings that you can stack up to two times with your Tempest double is really, really powerful. I think this hero is probably one of the most annoying heroes to push in against in the game, since he can stack so many spark rates and just really start putting in work once teams are pushing into the base, since they get so much evasion and... It's just really, really annoying to deal with. I gladly obey. Thy will be done. My fate is sealed. Thy bidding, the master. I bow to your will. My life for Nezu. Oh, well, I'm fucking on my hockey's pretty hard. Done. Whatever. What's <laughs> magnetic field? Flux is C. I, I don't know why Flux is C in Dota 1. It just is. I should have probably casted more spark rates with that clone because you're not going to lose mana. Now, once you level up Tempest Double to its max level, it has a cooldown of 55 seconds and a still concentration of 20 seconds, but the HP cost as well as the mana cost does decrease significantly. To at level 16, it doesn't cost anything to cast it. In the early levels, you probably shouldn't be spamming this ability too frequently unless you are in the jungle and you're trying to use the minus, just because, I mean, It'll cost a lot of your HP, and this hero isn't really that tanky. Go, hit the PL. No PL. I see he's played against some Orkhorns in the past. He knows how to deal with it. I should really have a spark right up to control the rune, especially since I don't want boots, but I'm just losing my focus in this game. Now, something else with Magnetic Field is that it only affects heroes as well as buildings. It doesn't affect creeps, because I guess if creeps had 100% evasion when you're pushing in, that would be ridiculously overpowered. And I just want to finish the mine, so I'm just going to spam Spark Rates in the middle lane and go to the jungle. I don't think this hero can jungle that well since Spark Rate, even though it has a low mana cost and does a decent amount of damage, you have to cast it so often that it's really not feasible to jungle up with this ability. Minus online. Let's see. Get my field. I know I'm not too sure what the build you should go with. All I know is for mid lane, you should probably max spark rates to get as much damage as possible and really just annoy your teammates or annoy the enemy team today. Death. And maybe annoy your teammates since I don't think, think this hero is necessarily a strong ganker. I mean, he could have some unseen synergy that I'm not currently exploiting for his double in regards to using it to gank, but. Could be mistaken as well. Alright, we're gonna get a Skelly King. And I'm gonna get myself a whole bunch of gold. All me! All me!
Now, something else you can do with this hero is you can get Refresher Orb, and that just makes it really funny. Your Illusion won't get the Refresher Orb, but you can get up to three Illusions that way. Uh, I'm just debating whether to cast the Magnetic Field on to Sven or not. So you can get up to three Illusions, and that means you can get three Minuses, but that means you cannot get, uh, whatchamacallit, three Necro Books, because Actually, it was fixed in a recent patch. I think maybe 6.76 or maybe in the most recent patch. You can't get more than two set of Necro books, obviously designed for this hero. And you can see my Tempest level is coming back up, so I can minus another creep. And my gold intake is just skyrocketing, skyrocketing at this pace. No, I don't have more keys. So I have to manually click everything. And I should probably use this guy to scout out with spark rates, stuff like that. And I kind of need some boots. Now for boots, I'm not too sure what boots you should go for. I guess arcane boots make a lot of sense since you're obviously casting a lot of shit. But at a certain point, you don't really need to cast your ultimate. And his other spells aren't really that mana intensive. My life for Yes. It's gonna flux the centaur because it does a lot of damage and does a pretty solid amount of slow as well. And hopefully I can get a regenerate or something. And it is daytime, so let's see if I can spot the rune. Nope, the rune is top. So I have to go back to base. Uh, I can summon a Tempest spot double and use another Maya up relatively soon. You can see, like, his golden tick is absolutely crazy once you get the Maya online. And I'm just gonna get made normal boots and then just rush the necrobook because I want to just run around with necrobooks. I mean, I'm already a bad micro player, but you can just sort of A-click necrobooks at a certain point and just do a heck of a ton of damage and just really own face. And that's why I think this hero can be potentially played as a safe lane carry, just because if you get something like a necrobook level 3 up so fast and just have an immense number of items, then you can really just control the game at that stage for the, a large portion of the early game. I can't drop yes, Midas, so I'm gonna just pick up a magic Whoa. wand, because I fucking love magic wand, even though it's obviously not really the best time on him. And I'm just gonna pick up a TP scroll. Nah, pick up another one. Why the f why the hell not? And now I'm just gonna rush that necro book. And you can see my normal mice is coming up relatively soon. Uh I'll just teleport to bottom lane. <laughs> As well as my Tempest Double Midas is coming up relatively soon as well. So obviously you can see the similarities with Meepo as well as Tinker. And my Midas animation missed because Dota 1 has a casting point unlike in Dota 2. Well, that's annoying, but I guess it's not the biggest deal. Eh, it is kind of a big deal. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. It's pretty annoying. I'm just gonna blast these on creeps. Snoop down, because you're not going to really lose too much from this mana usage. And meanwhile, team fight's breaking out, and my team looks like they're okay. Upheaval. Such a useful spell. Actually, my team is winning. <laughs> All me! I take full credit for this team fight victory. Now, I'm not too sure what we should do in the early game besides farm up because his abilities aren't really the best in terms of early game ganking just because people have a tendency of clumping up. So, <laughs> this could be the proper way to play him in terms of farming until Necrobook. It could be not the proper way of playing him because I'm not doing anything. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can get level 2, but it's only a 5 second cooldown decrease, so the cooldown's not really the biggest deal. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, when you're making your minus, every cooldown does matter. Uh, the biggest thing of leveling up the ultimate is just to get the mana as well as HP cost removed when you do decide to use it. Now, for builds, obviously, mice and Necrobook are core, in my opinion. Because even in the late stages game, if you manage to get a double Necrobook, that's still a lot of damage, despite Necrobook really falling out at that point. Let's see if I can help my team. It's probably unlikely. 
Who knows? All me! <laughs> oh man, that guy KS my KS. What a guy. Now, I think you should probably use the Tempest Double on small groups just to try to maximize your intake. And you should obviously use the main Tempest Double on big creeps to try to get as much experience as possible. Random Spark Wraith. Because, again, when your clone uses the minus, you don't get any experience. But you still get the gold. So, again, back to the standard build. I think I actually do need arcane boots in this case, because I'm starting to run out of mana, and I'm not properly placing my spark rates to camp for the rune. Oh my god! I was gonna right quit. I was saying, oh, I have to be careful because this is Dota 1 runes, and then... The lag, and messing up. That's annoying. Whatever, I'll go to their jungle, steal their creeps. At least I have haste and get myself there faster. I will be done. My fate is my life for Nezu. Where shall my blood be? And hello, a billion creeps. My life for Nezu. I wish only so. I gladly obey. I will be done. My fate is. But yeah, back to the stair build. I can't really enter get anything. I am sanctified. My life for Nezu. I think eh, actually eh, I, I think I'll just back off for now. My faith is seen. Minus is coming up relatively soon. I don't want to be in position to use it. I'm just gonna cover this guy's retreat as best I possibly can. Half the Oracle in a little bit of trouble. He is screwed. Oh yeah, no fatal damage because of Narf being Narf. And since this guy's isolated, the purge is gonna do a huge chunk of damage. Gonna get a tempest double online. I wish Yes. My life is seen, Master. I Oh my god. And if this is Dota 2, the hotkeys would not be reset at all. I'm not really doing anything, I'm just spamming abilities, hoping it makes some sort of difference. And it looks like I'm at least doing something. I guess that's okay. I'm, I'm satisfied with that. Uh, we'll get the purge back up. Back to build! <laughs> Hex, Necrobook, and Midas. I think those are pretty much his only three cores. And this is actually a pretty slow Necrobook, all things considered. Just because I'm probably not farming as much as I should be. Which is odd because I've done nothing this game aside from farm. So what this hero's role is, safe lane farmer, try to get a huge advantage, or just maybe a turtle in support since this hero is a nightmare to push up against, because you get glyph essentially for, I guess, somewhere up towards 12 seconds because of the magnetic field which you can stack on buildings which gives them 100% evasion. So I think that alone makes him a viable support if you decide to go that route. Um, I think his usefulness in terms of getting the ultimate is still too valuable to pass up. No, 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 not like that. Is someone injured? So if you want to rush a Necrobook Cup and try to win the game super early on, I think that's well within your right to do just that. My like for Nezu. Yes, Master. Thy bidding. But he can still function well as support. Unfortunately, he can't zone very well as support. I mean, you can give your hero a bit of extra protection as... I need to guess Tempest Double. Minus some bitches. I will die. That's Necro 2. What is your wish? What ails you? 
IPD master. Magnetic field. Now as support, I'm not too sure what abilities it could necessarily max first. I've got to imagine maxing spark rate. It's not going to be as effective because it doesn't really contribute too much in terms of slowing, nor does it contribute too much in terms of other shit. Outside of like giving you a bit of extra vision, it's really not the best Tron versus Tron spell. I mean, sure, you're going to increase the likelihood of it hitting a hero, and it does do respectful damage. Um, it's just a bit like that. <laughs> it takes so long to materialize, and actually its travel time is 400, so if a hero has enough move speed, you can actually dodge it for an eternity, similar to a spell like Death Pulse. And you've all seen those clowny animations of people using, or people getting out of the way of Death Pulse. But yeah, I think his nature as a defensive support could really help Turtle game out if you really want to go for a super late game lineup. And also keep in mind you could stack spark rates, which I have not been doing that well this game. But it is definitely a feasible idea to do just that. And pushing or stacking a lot of spark rates, keep in mind since the duration is 50 seconds and since you can get a lot more spark rates online with your clones, you can get I think probably over 10 spark rates and just really control the base at that stage, and once they actually reach the base, then, well, <laughs> good luck pushing up against Magnetic Field as well as a uh, double Magnetic Field, and just even more Spark Rates. Again, I think this hero is lacking something in terms of gank department just because his abilities to gank effectively are really dependent on the opponents being out of position or not really knowing that this hero does that effectively. I think once people figure out what this hero does, then he loses a lot of his DPS luster. But, I mean, his ultimate as well as his Mac Knight field are still good enough for him to be a viable option, which is why he has been nerfed pretty hard. Oh, I've actually finished the Necrobook. So that means I can start doing even more work. And you can see, you can also use the Mac Knight field offensively. You can stack them and just give your team a ridiculous Ridiculous boost in terms of attack speed. It's not even funny. I mean, 80% attack speed for your entire team when you're pushing in, multiplied over eight seconds. It's pretty much a troll ultimate, except you know, you can use it on this guy, and you get 100% evasion. Although it does have a longer cooldown. I'm just gonna put a spark right there. I've not been uh, properly using the Spark Wraith because it does give you a small amount of vision. My tip still is coming up. Whatever, got the minus up. That's all that matters in life. Alright, looks like a rushing. <coughs> but I can't really see. What else you should feasibly get outside of these two items? I mean, he's an agility based hero as well, Golem. Suddenly. Random Golem. Oh, it's our Golem. How do we get our. How do we get a Golem? Rubik. We have a Rubik. Oh man, I'm so used to Dota 2 Rubik model, I forgot we even had a Rubik. I guess it was. Coming up really soon, so he might as well use it. Yes, I bow to I gotta actually remember how to use runes in this game. My blood be the man who I cooked the ball, so I annoying. I will be done. I'm just so spoiled with the Dota 2's item system. I am a spoiled bitch. No, I need to get mad at something. Now, obviously, I don't think you want to ever sell Midas with this hero just because he gets so much extra gold in comparison. Um, I think Shivas could actually be a pretty strong item because you get a really powerful double nuke. 400 damage is definitely nothing to be underestimated. Tempest Double is coming up relatively soon, should probably use that as well. I think this hero's main flaws is obviously his stack growth is pathetic. He doesn't really have much in terms of lane control. I 
mean, Flux is never really going to be that useful in a Tron, it's a Tron situation unless you have a lot of damage to back you up. And I think if you don't get an early advantage with this here, if you play him offensively, then he could really fall out of favor. Oh my god, can't micro! I mean, I couldn't micro before, but this is even worse. I need to summon more necro books. Wait, where's my guy? I think I used both my necro books. Necro books abound! Go! I choose you, necros! Follow, track, hunt, do stuff! I have no idea what's going on. I got a purge! Yeah! I got a kill, bitches! <laughs> I did something this game, I'm gonna tell my mom. Man, Oracle, such a nice guy, healing me up. He actually knows how to play Oracle, unlike me. But unfortunately, I think this game is gonna end with my Marius up. No, creep's gonna spawn. Shit. Xen, stop! Oh my god. Alright, well, got to go undercover to get these creeps. My Marius demands it. Yeah, what's up, Tower? You can't hit me! That's so annoying. Magnetic Field and is uh, Tempest Double, I think, are his big key draws. And obviously, the double is really the main bread and butter. I can cast that thing for free because I got. Ah, oh, Sven, you bitch. What a bastard. Creep. Why did you find a creep? Creep. Midas. Midas, please! Oh my god. <sighs> Life is hard. So yeah, this hero is obviously really powerful if you're smart, and I have no idea how to play this hero, so obviously I'm not very good with him. I think his effect lucid does drop off quite a bit once the other team knows how to play against him, because two of his spells are not going to be as powerful. I mean, Spark Wraith in a team fight is still going to do damage to heroes, and still do a respectable chunk of damage nonetheless. But Purge, I mean, you can sort of do it, make a lineup composed that the enemy team can't comp up. Maybe if you pair him with something like a Warlock or a Magnus or something like that, where the enemy team obviously doesn't want to comp up as much as possible, then Flux could become very powerful. But his main appeal is either as a Defensive support and just turtle it up with Magnetic Field as well as Temple to double. And he can actually recover. He can actually get a lot of gold compared to other supports since he can have the Mice get himself back in game. So I think he could be powerful support. He's definitely not the greatest mid. I don't think he's going to be played much as mid whatsoever when he ever gets introduced into Dota 2 because he has very little in control. And having Zimmer, zero armor and having not an AoE creep coming very is just going to be suicide. And I think he can be played as a Tinker, as a trial and carry, and just try to farm ASAP and look to end the game with the double Necro book at around maybe the 15 minute mark since you don't have to get Bottle or Boots or Wand or anything like that. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this. I'm sorry, <laughs> my gameplay wasn't really the best. My arm is kind of killing me. So it's very hard for me to actually play Dota, especially Dota 1, which is a lot hunkier in comparison. Hopefully this tells you something about the Arc Warden. Uh, other heroes I'm looking to go over are perhaps Phoenix, who I actually have never played in Dota, despite him being out for like three years. Um, New Pit Lord, and perhaps the Ember Spirit. After that, I think all the other heroes are going to be introduced into Dota 2 relatively soon, outside of those few heroes. So hopefully you enjoy that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Peace.